You know, I always ask my brother, what song are we going to sing? And uh, sometimes I'll suggest another one, maybe something that goes along with what I'm preaching. And this morning, if I was going to do that, I would have had to sing, The Devil is a Sly Old Fox. Now, the problem is, many of you don't know that. But if you grew up in the Sunday school here in the buses, you should know it. The devil is a sly old fox. If I could catch him, I'd put him in a box. And lock the door and throw away the key for all the tricks he's played on me. I'm glad I am a Christian, all right? And trusting in the Lord. Uh, hey, listen, I, we're living in a new day. I think that. Now you say, well, it's a new year. Yeah, but I, I've heard people many times say, man, we're living in a new day. And I, I think about, just in my lifetime, the, the huge changes that, that have occurred just in my lifetime. Uh, it's absolutely amazing. Uh, when I was a kid, most every kid, kids played outside. And uh, if it was summertime, they, they played outside. Guys, you know, had balls and bats, and we played baseball, and and then we'd play football or whatever. And but man, it was constantly outside. Nowadays, it used to, for instance, at Christmas, you'd ride around and you'd see kids out on new bicycles. Uh, but now you don't see that as much. And you definitely don't see as many kids playing outside, you know. And, uh, and I think that's a shame in many instances, but uh, probably nothing I can do about it, okay? Uh, I would tell you, you'd be better off if you raised your kids away from a screen. Amen. Uh, they don't need to be staring at a screen all the time. But man, everything, that we, it's a new day because of the computers. That we, We've got access to so much information, it's amazing. Now, a lot of it's false information, but we do have access to it. I mean, it's the click of a mouse away, you know, and uh, stuff that used to take days to find, and maybe you'd have to go to the library and dig and dig and dig. Not now, boy. Get on the computer a few clicks and, you know, Google it. or And there it is. All right? It's right there in front of you. And uh, maybe that's a good thing. Maybe it's not so good. Um, there, there was a time, you know, if it was leftovers, it meant crank up the oven. Amen. Get it going and put them in and wait a while. Not anymore, man. Pop the door open, throw it in, shut it, and nuke it. All right? And boy, no time at all. You've got that microwave oven, and it's there, and it's ready, and you can eat. And uh, it, it's, it's just, man, it, it's a new day. But here's the problem. In this new day, we still got the same old problems. Amen. You think about it, man. We've got poverty. I can remember when uh, Lyndon Baines Johnson right. said, boy, we're going to take care of that. We're going to have a war on poverty. <laughs> well, we know who won. Amen. Poverty won, all right? We Amen. still got poverty. Amen. We've got a problem of crime. Amen. We've got a problem of drugs. Right. We've got a problem of war. Oh, yes. Boy, added to that in this day, we've got the problem of terrorism. Amen. And, and the truth is, I guess we could stand here and... Uh, take a poll, we could go on and on and we could all share all the kind of problems that are out there that are going on and uh, the problems haven't changed, the problems haven't gone away, all right? Politicians promise, social workers posture, but the problems don't go away, they're still there. Now there's a reason, all right? The reason is because in this new day, we've got the same old devil. We've got the same old devil. Look, if you will, in John chapter 8, look at verse 44. The Lord Jesus said, You are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And there he is. You know what? We live in a new day. Well, we've got the same old devil, all right? Uh, he hadn't gone anywhere. He hasn't changed. And he's not going away. We're going to have to contend with him. And we need to think about that. In this new day, we've got the same old devil. So what do you mean by that? Number one, he's still a liar. He's still a liar. The Bible said there's no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. Amen. Hey man, you can count on it. He's a liar. 
you ever know any person that you knew that you could count on to lie to you? You ever know somebody like that? I've known some people that, man, they had lie instead of telling the truth when the truth would have better served them. Amen. But they'll still tell a lie. The There's people out there like that. They're just liars. Well, hey, the Bible said the devil's a liar. You could count on him. He's still going to lie to you. He said, what about? Well, he lies about salvation. Oh. He lies about salvation. You know, the devil's going to do everything he can, and he's going to tell you, look, you don't need to listen to that preacher. You don't need to worry about that. You don't need He He's talking about being born again. You don't need to worry about that. But he's a liar. Okay, he is a liar. He'll tell you, listen, there's no reason for you to come by way of Calvary. Oh, we don't have to have that old bloody religion. You don't have to come through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. The devil would tell you, listen, if you'll be good, if you'll be sincere, you'll just do your best in life, do the best you can, hey, God's, you don't have to worry, he's not going to turn you away. You see, he'll lie to you about salvation. He'll lie to you about it. He's been lying to people about it for years and years and more years. And he still lies about it. Still lies about him. He'll lie to you about salvation. Not only will he lie to you about salvation, he'll lie to you about the scriptures, the word of God. He's going to lie to you about this book right here. Amen. He's going to tell you in, that, in his best way, hey, that's not the eternal, inerrant, infallible word of the living God. It's not that. Hey, that's not it. Well, wait a minute. The Bible says that's what it is. It's the word of God. But the devil's going to come along and say, man, it doesn't matter what you believe about the Bible. and You don't have to believe all of that. And hey, listen, those first three or four chapters of the book of Genesis, those are just myths that have grown up. Why, science would tell you that there wasn't an Adam and Eve. Science would tell you, look, you've descended uh, from the animal kingdom. And uh, man is just the highest form of animal running around. Now I'll admit to you there's a lot of evidence to that because a lot of people act like animals. But wait a minute, that doesn't make you an animal just because you act like an animal. That doesn't make you one. Uh, I've seen people down on their four, you know, down on all fours barking, but they still weren't a dog, okay? They, they were just playing the part, all right? But that didn't make them a dog. Listen, my friend, uh, the devil lied to you about Scripture. The devil lied to you about that. He'll tell you, man, this, this is not the Word of God. Hey, this book was just written by men. It was just written by men like you, and they, they got an idea and they wrote it down, and you ought not to let this book bother you. But the devil's lying to you. He's lying to you. You hear me? He's a liar. He's a liar. You know what? He lies to you about salvation. He lies to you about the scripture. He lies to you about the matter of separation from sin. He's going to come along and tell you, hey, listen, there's no reason you need to worry. It doesn't matter how you live. It doesn't make any difference how you live. Look, you can live any way you want to. You can do like the beer commercial says. Man, you only go around once in life, so grab for all the gusto you can. You can live that way. He said, he'll tell you that's all right. I mean, it's okay. Live a little bit. Hey, a little sin's not going to hurt you. That's the lie of the devil. Amen. Hey, the devil told the lie this way when you were a kid. What your parents don't know won't hurt. Yes, sir. Amen. Hey, the devil's a liar, okay? He's a liar. That hasn't changed. Yeah, we live in a new day. Still the same old devil. Right. He's still a liar. He's going to lie to you about everything. Anything that has to do with righteousness and holiness and godliness, he's going to lie to you about it. If he's got anything to do with God, if he can do his best, he'll keep you from getting saved. <coughs> he'll do his best. He'll keep you from trusting Christ. Hey, it's the devil that makes you put it off. There's very, very, very few people that get saved the first time they hear a clear presentation of the gospel and understand it, most people don't get saved. They put it off. They put it off. I mean, 
and we don't put off other good deeds. We, we don't put them off. We, we snap them up, all right? Now, I always get a little bit standoffish when somebody says, man, I got this deal for you, but you got to act on it right now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's like those uh, the deals when they get you in on the timeshare presentation. Hey, it's only available for you today. I looked at him and I said, you're telling me if I came in here tomorrow with cash money, you wouldn't let me make the deal? Right. Well, yeah, I said, that's right. You would. Right. Hey, but listen. I, hey, when it comes to, we're not talking about something costing you anything. We're talking about the free gift of salvation, the free gift of Amen. eternal life. Amen. Right. And we put it off. Right. Yeah. We think, I need to think about that. Well, sure, you need to think about, okay, I'm going to swap my sin for God's righteousness. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm going to swap an eternity in a place called hell and a place of torments for a place called heaven. And, and I'm going to uh, swap that eternity of suffering for an eternity with God and rejoicing and, and uh, marvelous time. I need to think about it. Yeah, yeah. why did you do that? Because of the devil. He's a liar. He doesn't want you to get saved. Hey, he doesn't want you to believe the Bible. <coughs> he doesn't want you to believe the Bible. I've always marveled at atheist organizations that fight against God so much. Mm -hmm. yeah, come on. You know, there's some things I don't believe exist, and I don't fight them. No, sir. Amen. Amen. No. I don't see any reason for fighting that which I don't think exists. That's right, right, right. And, and, but atheists fight. Listen, old devil fights this book because he knows what this Amen. book can do. But he'll lie to you about this book. He'll lie to you about your life. He'll tell you, you know what, a little sin won't hurt. But what he won't tell you is it's not going to just be a little. One sin always leads to another. And it always gets worse. It's a progressive thing gets worse and it gets you going and once you start going down the hill it's hard to put on the brakes but the devil lies to you about that hey new day the same old devil he's still a liar not only is still a liar he's still a murderer he's still a murderer listen you say well he, if he murders him no it's what he murders he murders homes he actually he'll kill a home oh yeah Man, I, I, I can't begin to tell you how many homes I've seen him destroy. Right. Because he got in. Right. And he murdered the home. Mm -hmm. Murdered. Just absolutely put it under. Right. Yeah. Because he wrecked it. He got there. Oh, yeah. Hey, he murders happiness. Oh, yeah. Amen. It's amazing. The devil, I told you, he's a liar. And the Bible says he's a liar. He's a murderer. And one of the things he'll murder in your life is your happiness. Amen. Yeah. He'll murder it. He'll just take it away from you. I, I, I've seen so many people listen to the devil, and then I've watched them, and they're not happy. They, they've lost any happiness that there might be. But see, the Bible promises us we'll do what God says. Man, we're talking about joy. We're talking about happiness. But instead, we listen to the devil, and he murders your happiness, just takes it out. I, I've, I've seen him take people. There's a kid... Years ago, that came to our Christian school. If I called his name, some of you in here would know him. Not going to call his name, but man, that little that guy was always smiling. Every time you saw him, there was a smile on his face all the time, always grinning, always happy. And I mean, it just never failed. And then I didn't see him for several years, and I met him downtown, downtown Fort Worth. Just happened to run across him, and uh, we sat down together, and it was lunchtime, and he was there, and I was there, and I said, "Hey." I sat down here and he was eating lunch and I said, do you care if I join you? And I began to talk to him. And I began to talk to a fellow. He was no longer a kid, but boy, he was no longer happy. He was bitter. Angry. As a matter of fact, I was talking to him. He had just came from the courthouse. Some problems in his life. And I asked him, I said, hey, I want to ask you something. What happened to that kid that was always smiling that I knew? Yeah. He said he's not here anymore. You know why? Because he listened to the devil. He listened to the devil. He Listen, he'll murder your happiness. 
He'll murder your home if you'll let him. He'll murder you. That's what it is. Not only that, he'll murder your hope. He'll murder your hope. You know, one of the worst things I think a person can lose is their hope. Their hope. I was watching the TCU football game last night. And I had, had started recording it because I hate commercials. So I've got where I record and then I watch and flick through the commercials and I'll start watching the game after the game starts so I can flip through the commercials. By the time the game ends, I'm at the end of the game, all right? So it's all right <clears throat> and I've got it down to a science. I can do it pretty good. <clears throat> and so I started watching the game last night and as my wife and I were watching it together and uh, she was in her recliner and I was in my recliner. and. Uh, I watched it and she watched it with her eyes closed. It was amazing uh, how she was doing. And uh, man, the game was just terrible. It was terrible. I don't know if you watched it or not, okay? But it, it was terrible. I mean, the first half, everything that could go wrong did go wrong. I mean, it, it was just ridiculous. Uh, when, when you block a team's punt and they get a first down out of it, things are going bad, all right? And that happened in that game. And, uh, man, I'm sitting there, you know, and I, I forget now exactly what happened. I threw up my hands in my chair, and I, man, I really didn't say much. My wife said, what? I said, no, it's what happened here. These guys can't do anything right. When they get something right, they do something dumb. Well, that was the first half. First half ended, it was 31 to nothing. And TCU had to nothing. <clears throat> now, I'll be honest with you. I was pretty pessimistic. I was pretty pessimistic. But I zipped through the halftime and, and I began to watch a little bit of the second half and it began to perk up just a little bit. Just a little bit. And I got tired and I, I went to sleep. Cut it off and went to bed. But I got up this morning, flipped on TV just to catch the news and the first thing I hear, TCU came behind and win the game. <laughs> you said, okay, what is the point of that? You know what? They didn't give up hope. Amen. They didn't give up hope. Yeah, I tell you what, when hope's gone, you're in trouble. Yes, sir. When hope's gone, you're in trouble. You know, you can have a lot of bad things happen. But as long as you don't give up hope, you, you don't Amen. lose hope, and you stay in there and you keep trying, you can overcome it. Right. But boy, if there's one thing the devil likes to murder, he'd like to murder your hope. Amen. He'd like to convince you, no hope. No hope. You don't have a chance. I've stood <clears throat> behind the podium two different times and in front of that podium was a casket. And I preached at funeral to two people that gave up hope. They gave up hope. So how do you know? Because they took their own life. They gave up hope. They, I mean, you know why? The devil will murder your hope. Oh, yeah. He's a murderer. He's a murderer. I tell you, the people that did that, they had a lot to live for. A lot to live for. I've dealt with four different people and in, in families where people committed suicide. Devastating for the family. Right. Devastating for the family. But it happens because they lose their hope. They think I have no reason to live. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Let me say this to you. If you get to that point in life, would you please call me before you decide to take your life? I was talking <clears throat> this past year with a friend, a preacher, on the phone. And really, what he was telling me in so many words was, Preacher, I'm fixing to end it. I'm fixing to end it. I told him, you can't. You can't. You don't know what you're saying. Now, he had about given up hope. <clears throat> he had about given up hope. Now, not because of me, but thank God I was able to point and show him, you got a reason to live. There's a reason for you to be here. There is a reason for you to live. And, and he, he got through that period in life. Please. 
I'll tell you, the one that wants you to give up hope is the devil. Amen. You say, well, everything's going wrong. Everything that can go wrong is going wrong. It'll never be any better. I'm done. Hey! It's not true, but the devil will tell you that. Oh, yeah. The devil will tell you that. He'll murder your hope if he can. Hey, it's a new day, but the devil's still a liar. Right. And he's still a murderer. And I tell you something else, he's still a thief. Amen. He's still a thief. If he can, he'll steal everything that you've got that is precious from you. One of the things he steals from people is he steals their peace. Isaiah chapter 57 verse 21 says, There is no peace, saith my God, to the wicked. The devil steals your peace. Hey, he lies to you and gets you to live the way he wants you to live. And you know what you find out? You lose your peace. You lose your peace. You, you have trouble sleeping. Why? No peace. <coughs> you have trouble in life. Your life's in a turmoil. Why? No peace. No peace. Why? Because the devil will steal that from you if he can. Right. He'll steal that from you. He'll take it away from you. He'll take it away from you in a heartbeat. You, you can read the account in the scripture of people where the devil stole their peace away from them. All right? He'll steal it from you. Or your life be a constant turmoil. Doesn't have to be that way. But he's still a thief. He's still a thief. He'll steal your purity. He'll steal your purity from you. Because he's a thief. He's a thief. Hey, listen, can I say, you don't have, that doesn't have to be, but he is a thief. He'll steal it. He'll steal that. You know, I've got some things that I'm kind of careful about who I let know that I've got. You said, preacher, now you're telling everybody. Brother Blanton's video on this, it'll be on YouTube in a while. Everybody can look. But I'm not going to tell you what I've got. I'm not going to tell you where I keep it. But I will tell you I'm armed. Don't come after it. All right? Uh, look, uh, there's some things that I, I've got that I wouldn't just show to everybody. Now, there's a lot of things I've got that I would show to you and I would value and you'd say, who wants that? Well, I do. Well, we care. Hey, the devil steals from you. He'll steal that preciousness of your purity. You'd let him. You'd let him. Well, he wants to. He wants to put that scar and put that blot on the purity of your life. But you don't have to let him do it. You don't have to let him do it. You know what else he'll steal? He'll steal your potential. When I think of this, I immediately think of Samson, the Bible character. You know, Samson did some amazing things. Mighty acts. Uh, you, you, you think about some of the things in there. If you're familiar with the Bible story, you, you know he chased down 300 foxes, tied their tails together, stuck a fireman in between them, turned them loose. You said, what purpose did that serve? Well, it burned up a lot of wheat, okay? Because that's where he turned them loose. In the wheat field. He went and took the gates of the city, grabbed a hold of them, yanked them off their hinges, carried them over, and stuck them on the hilltop. So mighty act took great strength to do it. He took the jawbone of a donkey and slew a thousand people. He did some mighty acts. But wait a minute. I'll never forget hearing Phil Schuler preach on Samson. And he said, do you know what Samson was known for? And he's preaching to a bunch of teenagers. And the teenager says, oh, he's known for his strength. And, Sam, and old Phil Schuler said, no, he was known for fooling around. He's known for fooling around. That's all he did. I mean, taking the gates off the city and carrying them over, sticking them on the hillside, that made some city leaders mad. Okay, but he was just fooling around. Tying those 300 foxes' tails together, he was just fooling around, all right? And that's what he was known for. But you know what? 
what potential he had to lead his nation. To lead his nation and, and to get them free from the oppressive regime in which they lived. Man, if he single-handedly could take a job on and kill a thousand, wonder what he could do with a sword. Right. Amen. And if he could do that as one man, man, if he could lead an army, no telling what they could have done. <coughs> but you know what happened? The devil stole his potential. Amen. You're sitting here this morning and you've got great potential. You said, now, preacher, you're just preaching to the young people now. No, I'm preaching to everybody here. Amen. There is potential in you. Yes, sir. But if the devil could, he'll steal it. He'll steal that potential. He is a thief. All right? Hey, it's a new day. But the devil's still a liar. He's still a murderer. He's still a thief. But there's some good news, all right? You don't have to believe his lies. You don't have to believe his lies. Hey, folks, we've got the truth. Here it is. We don't have to believe the lies of the devil. You don't have to believe that. You know, have you ever figured it out? When somebody comes to you and tells you something, you don't have to believe it? Just because so-and-so said it's true does not mean it's true. Hey, by the way, just because Dan Brokaw or Dan Rather or... Any of these other news, just because they say it doesn't make it true. Amen. And just because somebody comes to you and tells you a tale on somebody you know doesn't make it true. Amen. And my friend, just because the devil lies to you, you don't have to believe it. You don't have to believe it. You don't have to believe him when he comes to you and say, Hey, you don't need to get born again. You can put off salvation. Wait until you're really old. You know, like 115. You don't have to get in a hurry about salvation. Hey, you don't have to do it the way that preacher says it. You can just do it your way and it'll be all right. Hey, he'll lie to you, but you don't have to believe him. You don't have to believe him. It's not necessary. We've got the truth. Can I tell you this? Yep, he's a murderer, but you can stop his murderous ways if you want to in your home and in your life. My friend, you need to realize he can't do what you don't let him do. He cannot do what you don't let him do. He is not God. Amen. Now God's omnipotent, all right? And, and he is going to have his way in your life whether you want it or not. He's right. going to do his will. But the devil can only do what you let him do. Amen. He can't murder your home. He can't murder your hope. He can't do that unless you let him do it. Unless you allow him to happen in your life. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. You don't have to give him the reins. You don't have to give him control. You don't have to say, oh well, what's the use? There's no reason to try. Yes, there is. There's every reason to try. It's your life. It's your life. It's not his. Now how you want it to wind up is up to you. It takes your effort. It's up to you to decide what you're going to do. Hey, he's a thief, but you know what? You can keep a thief at bay. Yep. You can keep a thief at bay. I'll be honest, I like those houses that you go up to and there's a sign there that says, this house, you know, I've seen them, this house is protected by a wheat, a dachshund, yeah. or two uh, chihuahuas. Right. And some of them, you know, it's a Doberman Pinscher. But I like those houses that says this house protected by Smith & Wesson. Amen. Now, I just be honest with you, I, I like that kind of deal. I, I look at, hey, to me, when you break into somebody's house, if you get shot, hey, do you ever think maybe if you hadn't broke into the house, that wouldn't have happened? Can I say this to you, the old devil? He is a thief, but you don't have to let him in. You can keep him at bay. You got your Bible there? Go to James chapter 4. In the New Testament there, James chapter 4, right after the book of Hebrews, is the book of James, right before the book of 1 Peter. So there, there's where James is. I want you to find James chapter 4, would you? 
Listen, he's a thief. He's a murderer. He's a liar. But you can keep him in bed. You can keep him away from you. You can do it. In Hebrews chapter 4, would you drop down and look at verse 7? The Bible says, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil. And notice what it says. And he will flee from you. Hey, you know, the Bible's true. Yeah, the devil's a thief. He's going to come. He'd like to steal everything you've got of value. Oh, he's not interested in your fine collection of, uh, you know, vase and, and cut glass. He's not interested in your collection of gems and jewelry. But I tell you what, he'd like to steal your purity. He would love to take the hope that you have and just take it away from you. Oh yeah, he'd love to do that. He'd love to get his hands on it. He'd like to remove the peace that you have. He'd like to get your life in a turmoil. But you don't have to let him. You don't have to let him. The Bible says you can submit yourselves to God and you can resist the devil and he'll flee from you. He'll flee from you. You know, the problem is, we're, we're, here, here's the way we kind of operate. Bro, Brother Hawkins, would you come up here just for a second? You know, if Brother Hawkins wants me to do something, we've all joked about this. That's good. I, Brother Hawkins maybe says, hey, preacher, let's go fishing. Oh, Brother Hawkins, I'm so busy. But hey, if you twist my arm a little bit, you know. I'm coming, all right. You know, y'all know what I'm talking about? Thank you, Brother Hawkins. That's the way we are. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm too big, really. I, I've got so much going on. But, you know, you're too smart. Oh, I'm going. I'm ready. Okay. I don't, I can't take the punishment, you know. Yeah, we're ready to give in. Well, the Bible says resist the devil. And Brother Hawkins was afraid I was going to have him be the devil, probably. I, but not this time, okay? Not this time. Hey, listen. We can resist the devil. He's going to come. Now, he will not approach you with uh, red flannel underwear on and with a horns projecting out of his head and a pitchfork in his hand, all right? If he would come that way, it would be easy to resist him. But he's going to come. He's going to come. Now, he may send somebody in his place, all right? Hey, sometimes it can be a friend. And you just have to learn to tell the friend no. Sometimes it can be, you know, an offer that sounds too good to refuse, but you know it's wrong. You know it's wrong. You know what you need to do? Nope. I'm going to resist that. I'm going to resist. I'm going to resist. Now, not, yeah, I'm going to resist, but if you twist my no, I mean resist. I mean, put up some obstacles. Amen. I mean, if he's at the door, stack some things in front of the door, all right? Lock it. And then lock the lock, all right? And then and slide the dead bowl in and, and hang the, light, the chain, everything you can. Put a chair under the doorknob. Never forget going to Chicago, Illinois on the train. Had somebody was supposed to pick me up, and that didn't work out. There was some uh, some confusion there, so I got into Chicago late in the evening, about eight or nine o'clock at night, and and I needed then I couldn't get, so I had to find a place to stay downtown Chicago. Look, I'm a city boy from Texas, all right, country kid from Texas. Now I'm in Chicago, and I'm standing there and. I was talking to some people there in, in, in the train station, and they said, uh, don't go on the street. Don't walk on the street tonight, this time of night. I thought, okay, if I got stupid written on my forehead, I know better than that. Look, there was no motel. There was no hotel rooms available. I don't know what was going on in Chicago. Couldn't find a room anywhere. One place. The YMCA Hotel, downtown Chicago. I took a taxi to the YMCA hotel. I want to tell you, there was an illustrious clientele out in front of that place. 
I thought about asking the taxi driver, how long, you know, how about if I stayed with you all night and slept here? What would he charge me? Because it didn't look good. So I got out and went in, got a room up on like the 11th floor. Hey, the YMCA hotel in Chicago is big. Got up on the 11th floor. The door opens. It is a dimly lit hallway. The kind you've seen in every B movie that's ever been on TV. <laughs> dimly lit hallway. It was not clean. I'm walking along. There's a huge hole in the wall. I've already seen the classy people that were staying there. And I get to my room. I unlock the door. I shut the door. I lock the door. Stuck a chair under the doorknob. And I thought, Lord, I'm in your hands, okay? And I'm going to tell you what, okay? I blocked the door. I was going to resist, okay? I didn't pull back the covers. I didn't take off my clothes. I lay down on the bed and went to sleep. And I slept that night. And I'm going to tell you what, I was ready to resist. I'd already thought what I was going to do if I heard somebody fooling with the door handle. You know, I already thought it out. Yeah. Our problem is the devil comes for us and we don't resist him. Hey, it's a new day, but it's the same old devil. Same old devil. And it, the Bible said you resist him, he'll flee from you. You know what? If he's running away from you, he can't take something from you. You can have peace. You can live a pure, godly life. You can reach your potential. But it's up to you. Hey, as I said, it's a new day, but we face the same old devil. We're going to face him every day. You think that's going to change? No. It hasn't changed in the last uh, recorded history. Never has changed. It hasn't changed down through the experience I've had. He's the same old devil. He's going to lie to you. He'll murder you. If he can, he'll steal from you. The question is, have you let him do it? Have you let him do it? If you have, you know what? You don't have to keep letting him do it. Just don't have to keep letting him do it. You can put a stop to it. It's within your power to stop the destruction that he wants to wreak in your life. But it's up to you. It's up to you. You've got to act. It's not going to happen because you just stand there and take it. You've got to act. You know what you need to do? You need to come to the Savior. The Bible says submit yourself to him. You need to submit yourself to God. Say, preacher, I'm already saved. Yeah, but you need to submit yourself to the one that saved you. Amen. Live in submission to him. Then you need to decide, you know what? I'm going to resist the devil. You know, I'm amazed at how little kids can say the word no. So strong at such an early age. Right. But when they get to be teenagers, they forget that word. And then through their 20s and 30s and 40s and, and some people up in their 60s, 70s, they still have forgot the word, no! But we'll use it as a little bit of key. Hey, you know what? That's the first thing you need to learn to say to the devil. No. Hey, I want you to go with me. No. It's not let me think about it. It's no. <clears throat> hey, I want you to be about it. No. Hey, if you just listen to me, I promise you. No. Hey, it's pretty simple. We've got to resist him. We submit ourselves to the Savior. And we resist the devil. Yeah. Hey, new day or not, same old devil. You know what? You're going to face him tomorrow, too. You're going to face him tomorrow. Some of our folks maybe that would have been in church this morning, they faced the devil this morning and they listened to it. Amen. They listened to it. They heard what he said instead of resisting it. I got news for you. You kids going back to school tomorrow, the devil's going to come along and say, just stay in the bed, man. You don't feel good. You poor little thing. You have a throbbing toe. You just stay in the bed. Oh yeah. You gotta resist it. You gotta resist it. You've got to learn to say, uh uh, to him. Submit yourselves to God. Hey, same old devil, you're gonna face him tomorrow, but what are you gonna do? You're gonna let him lie to you and believe it. 
you do, he'll murder you. Oh, maybe not physically, but he'll murder your hope. He'll steal from you, but he can't do it unless you let him. You know what's it going to be? Some of you, maybe the first thing you need to do is you need to submit yourself to God. And the first step in that is the invitation. You need to walk the aisle and submit yourself to Him. You need to do that. Maybe you're here this morning and you need to trust Him as your Savior. You need to get saved today. I'll tell you, you can't beat the devil on your own. You cannot do it. But if you'll submit yourself to God, with God's help, you can beat Him. You can beat Him. Will you do it? Will you do it? Would you be willing to submit yourself to Him? Would you stand please with every head bowed and every eye closed? The Lord dealing with you this morning. The Lord speaking to your heart. Maybe He's pointed out some specific area in your life where there's a problem and there's a need. You need to take some action about it. The devil's been working you over. Yeah, he's beating you up. He's robbing from you. He's stealing from you. Hey, don't let him do that to you. Don't let him. He can't do it unless you let him. Well, you need to come this morning. You need to do business with God. Would you do it today? Would you do it today? Our Heavenly Father, we ask you this morning to deal with every heart here today. Lord, help us to realize we're going to deal with the same old devil tomorrow. We're going to deal with him this afternoon. He's still a murderer. He's still a thief. He's still a liar. Dear God, help us to resist him. Help us to draw close to you. Or not a better way to start the year than close to God. Doing our best, Lord, to be what you want us to be. Would you deal with every heart this morning? Help us to submit to you today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We sing.